What's going on, folks? We're here in the annex, and we're talking about breathing. Blah, blah, blah. A lot of people do breath work, blah, blah, blah. But uh, this honestly changed my life. Had asthma as a kid growing up. What's going on, brother? And nobody told me that I should be breathing out of my nose, and they didn't tell me how to breathe at all. And in lieu... What's going on, Paulie? In lieu of everything that's going on, still in the news, nobody is talking about how to breathe, so... Here's a book, not a gospel. It's my Bible, but uh, feel free to take it or leave it. But we're talking specifically just a super simple exercise that I do in the morning, ideally in the afternoon, and ideally in the evening called Breathe Light to Breathe Right. So pretty simple. We're just breathing. Uh, before we even get there, though, we should go back a little bit and just talk about the diaphragm, talking about a deep breath. Uh, you'll, you may have heard this one before, you know, people say, take a deep breath, but they don't talk about how. So is it through the mouth? Are we going like this? <sighs> oh, deep breath, I feel better now. Like, that's the crazy part, man. Like, check this out. Here's one type of breathing. Mouth, nose, whatever. Looks cool, right? I look like I'm an athlete. Um, and it's a pretty popular thing, to. I always thought that when I exhale, my stomach would go out. When I inhale, it would go in because the lungs are right here, right? Uh, so if we refer to, let's see which one of these pictures makes sense. We have a diaphragm. These are the lungs and the, how the diaphragm extends down and then goes up. What up, Rob? I'm talking breathing. So as we see, breathing in, the stomach actually moves out. Breathing out the stomach moves in so as what up cbc as opposed to that first one we're not doing that we're doing this So the lungs are here, but the diaphragm is here. So that can like, the diaphragm is kind of like pulling down and like s sucking air down into the body. So this is actually what moves. And I exaggerate the stomach coming in and going out uh, for example's sake, but ideally you're having your ribs expand out as well, so. You'll see there's no movements of the shoulders. <laughs> Alright, so I'm just playing around here. But... No movement of the shoulders. I'm exaggerating all this in and out stuff uh, just for fun to show you like this is a muscle and it moves. And like now I can kind of belly dance. Diaphragm, lungs, shoulders don't need this. So that's just a little about breathing. It should be through the nose. It should be silent. Uh, we have in here as well that when you're practicing abdominal nasal breathing, you should not be able to see or hear your breath during rest. What up, Luke? We're talking breathing. This is a thing that changed my rugby career a few years ago. So, breathe light to breathe right. Basically, we're, I'm just gonna sit here and breathe for 10 minutes. Let's get back to the book, dude.
Uh, so we are practicing this exercise correctly when we slow down and reduce our breathing sufficiently to create a tolerable need for air. The need for air signifies an accumulation of, of carbon dioxide, the goal of which is to reset the body's tolerance to this gas. So another important note Lack of oxygen is not what causes us to breathe. When we hold our breath 20 seconds, 30 seconds, 10 seconds in, and we go, oh crap, I need to breathe. That is not a lack of oxygen. That's not our body is about to, our brain's about to die because it doesn't have oxygen. That is a buildup of CO2 and it doesn't feel comfortable for our body. But we could actually survive without oxygen. Like It would take a while for that oxygen to drop down to a to a serious level. So carbon dioxide is the thing. So we're trying to reset our body's natural, it's like lactate training, but it's carbon dioxide training. So it's helpful to exert gentle pressure against your chest and abdomen with your hands. We're trying to maintain this need for air for four to five minutes. So I'm gonna start writing this down. We got breathe, light, to breathe right. I don't know why I got these E's, that is the English. We're not English, we're Americans. So, through the nose. Into diaphragm. I don't think I spelled that right. Do 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 do. What up, Ewan? I'm talking breath. So we're putting gentle pressure with hands on our chest and belly and do 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 what else do we need create tolerable tolerable need tolerable hunger for air not stressful so we're not trying to force it we're not holding our breath to stress ourselves out we're just creating a tolerable need for air so I'm going to place one hand on my chest, one hand just above my navel. Let's see, we'll get back here. Uh, no worries, dude, I'll post it on my IGTV. And this is also the first time I'm really sharing this, so no worries, dude. Um, college comes first, and we'll talk soon. Ew. So... Hand on the chest and on the be the belly. I'm feeling my abdomen moving out as I inhale and in as I exhale. As I breathe, I'm exerting gentle pressure with my hands against my abdomen and my chest, creating resistance to my breathing. So I have to like breathe into my hand. Do do do. With each breath. We're gonna take in less air than we want to. This would be a great, if I can figure out how to teach this efficiently, which I am learning, 
This would be great to add to my open water scuba course, which I'm teaching tonight. First thing we do in the pool, swim two lengths. Second thing, swim a length underwater holding our breath. So some people struggle with this because they're not used to that carbon dioxide buildup. Understandable. Not something a lot of people do. Um, make the in-breath smaller or shorter. Charlie. So again, this isn't about, we're not timing our inhales or putting quantities to it. We're just trying to make it softer, smaller, shorter, lighter. Uh, slow down. We're slowing down our breathing. And we're, on the exhale, we're kind of just letting it fall out of our mouths, or out of our nose. It says, allow the natural elasticity of the lungs and diaphragm to play their role in each exhalation. Imagine a balloon slowly, in, slowly and gently deflating of its own accord. When the in-breath becomes smaller and the out-breath is relaxed, visible breathing movements will be reduced. You may be able to notice this in a mirror. And here is a good diagram. So we have... Inhale, exhale, smaller breath in, relax, breath out. We have a tolerable need for tolerable air shortage, good breath control, in, out. Here, too much of an air shortage, breathing. So if I was like... <sighs> So maybe I push it a little bit too much. It's kind of like, uh, if anyone knows, there's a lot of benefit to just holding your breath, but it's hard to just hold your breath for long periods of time. So this is kind of like a useful, easy, and helpful alternative of just breathing as light as possible for as long as possible. And there's times, and I may do it today, where I push it too hard and I breathe in too small and then my I'm just like, wow, I really need some air. And I just, so I'm not perfect. Hmm. I'll turn this around. I'll start the timer for 10 minutes. I want you to see my... Fuck it. We'll do it, lot. We'll do it. Sorry, Charlie. All right, go. Cool.
So now I'm going to test my bolt score, body oxygen level test. So what I'm going to do is I feel really good. <laughs> I got my timer. I'm just going to exhale, pinch my nose, hold my breath, and relax. Whenever I feel a physical need for air, either uh, for me, a lot of times it's I'll swallow or gulp, or if it's just like your brain being like, I need to breathe, then that's what we're testing. We're not seeing how long we can hold our breath. We're just testing where our level is at. So I'll do it now. Take two breaths and then hold on the exhale. So I swallowed there, 18 seconds, which is pretty bad. <laughs> um, at my best, I was around 30 seconds. Recently, I have been ignoring my breathing and been talking a lot more. And I've noticed my bolt score is down. Also, my, my thinking pattern is off. I've been a little bit more stressed. so. What I'm trying to do is return back to these basics because I know they work. I know how easy they are. Low tolerance of CO2 is, is linked to, um, not necessarily to worse performance with athletes, but it definitely makes it harder, I know myself, and it can also lead to anxiety, overthinking, and just a lot of poor health habits, you know, think of how many breaths we're taking. It's the same thing, like think how many steps we're taking. If, if our foot's kind of broken or something, how that would just compound over time. Think about how many breaths we're taking, especially like when we're sleeping, I mean, nonstop we're breathing. So our breathing pattern is off, super serious, super room for improvement. And it's cool stuff. So, hoping everybody got something out of this. This is, this is my first, this is really my passion, is showing people how to breathe. And that's why I like diving. It's all linked to the breath. You know, I get a lot longer bottom time because I breathe light. So, there's a lot of great stuff here. I'm very excited to share with people. I've just been, what's going on, scuba dive? I've just been a little too busy with other things to be able to focus on it. But I'm going to be learning how to teach this kind of stuff and be sharing it with the world. So, Red Sea, how's your breathing while diving? It's a little bit different with the regulator because we got to go. But that's all for me. I'm going to head down to Venice to teach my scuba class. So take it easy, everybody.